In this video, I go over XFCE customization. So starting out, I wanted to kind of show how to get around an XFCE. So you'll get something like this, and if you hit the default view, you may just have a little tiny bar. So first, you right click on that little tiny bar, or the full panel as we see here, and we go Panel Preferences. From here, you can decrease and increase the length of the window that you see. You can lock the panel if you don't want it moving around on you. So a lot of people go 100 length, lock it, and then it gives it that start menu type effect. And then you also have opacity under appearance, so you can kind of change how bright it is. And you can go from, you know, choose a lot of different things. You can actually use uh, all kinds of different things or just use the system style whatever floats your boat. I like to do solid color and control it a little bit more and then control it with opacity. Um, but if you have a really cool background, that may not be for you. Option is yours. And then your basic items. So as you see here, I am not using the default because I've actually not clicked that default button and then for the life of me, I kinda got lost on XFC the first time. So. I don't want that to happen to you guys. So to fix this and push like this uh, workspaces, the clock, and then my user, you know, I wanna push that over to the right because this just looks weird when it's like this. So to do so, first let's go ahead and create a separator and we'll separate this out. So we'll hit add and move this separator up to right there. Now that the separator's in that spot, you can easily right click that and hit properties right clicking right on that separator and then hit expand and close so you see this kind of expands all this in here this is windows buttons which it just shows you all my opening windows you don't actually need that you can just remove it and then that's what you get so a really very cool tool to know because it drove me mad that first bit. How the heck do I get stuff on the right and then just have my start menu over here? And this application's default just sucks. <laughs> it does. This is ugly. It looks like something from 1990. Thankfully, they've created a lot of plugins for XFCE, which I'm about to get into. And you should definitely get in your package manager or Paw Mac is what I'm using on Arch uh, and install these four plugins. And I'm about to go over them. Um, one is optional and I'll go over it as well. The first absolute requirement in my opinion is Whisker. Uh, Whisker is uh, basically this application menu replacement. You would just basically go into your add and remove programs um, which see here actually I'm gonna pull that up. I hadn't removed my package man. All right. Um, from here you would just type whisker. And then this is the one you want right here. And as you see, it's already installed, but if not, you would actually click install and apply. The second plugin that you probably will want is docky so if you type docky in it'll pop up it's this guy right here plank is an alternative but docky is probably a little more prevalent um so install it as well and then the second third and fourth is a la carte and mugshot now a la carte i find is almost a necessity mugshots just kind of a cool thing to have so let's get into whisker first so first things first, once installing Whisker, you need to actually add the item. So let's go ahead and add that item on our panel. So we can go ahead and go into here and just scroll down to Whisker or type it into the search box up above. So we'll click add and close. And we're gonna go ahead and move Whisker all the way over to the left. And we're gonna remove this old crappy menu and we are ready to customize our traditional Whisker menu. So let's go over the Whisker menu over here. Uh, we're going to go into properties, just right clicking and hitting properties here. And this pulls up the Whisker menu properties. After we got rid of that applications and put on Whisker over here, um, I wanted to walk through some of the things. So the opaqueness of Whisker is controlled down here. 
So it gives it that nice cool see-through effect. I really like this. Uh, the default menu, it obviously looks a lot better, but I'm just still like not really that sold on as far as the layout. It just feels kind of weird to me. So I like to change this. Uh, one, I like to change the position of the search entry next to the panel button. And then I also like to push the categories to the left of it. So let's go ahead and enable these two and see how it changes the look of the menu. And now you have that more traditional look. So I kind of dig this a lot better. Um, and you can change this and customize it even further. Um, let's say, see how it has all those labels. It's kind of wasted space. So let's go ahead and just take that off. And you see how it's kind of done. So you can, you can leave the labels on starting off. Once you get them, I like to remove them and it just, you know, frees up a little bit more space, makes it a cleaner feel and look. So that's these two, the appearance and behavior. Um, as far as commands, I do, let's say I wanted to do a logout instead of a suspend. You can come back here and you see this changed out to a logout from a suspend, or you can go into a full shutdown. Let's just go ahead and add an item instead of removing one. And as you see, we now have the power button. So obviously I'm not gonna be logging out of this machine, but I do use suspend on occasions. Go ahead and leave those two in there and call it good. Search item actions, I don't really do much here. Some people uh, are fanatical about this, but I have just never really used it. I probably should though, but each is on. So that is Whisker in a nutshell. Let's go ahead and move on to uh, Docky. So I'm gonna go ahead and launch Docky. I'm not, I don't personally use it because I'm not a big like OSX fan style down here, but uh, Docky is pretty darn easy to manage. You can just click on this and you can say start when it logs in. You can change the theme to be whatever you want and drag any dock to configure and position. So let's go ahead, click on it, and we can change the you know size of the icons um, to whatever we want. So the zoom factor, um, you know, you can I kind of toy around with this. I'm not going to go too far into it because honestly, I don't use it. I'm not a big fan of this dock, but I know a lot of people ask about it. So I thought I'd throw it into this video. So let's go ahead and change the look of it and change maybe our desktop starting out. If we right click and hit desktop settings from here, you can actually directly go ahead and flip through and change your desktop to whatever you're feeling like that day. Um, you know, just pick whichever one you like the best. Um, the folder, you can choose whatever you want as far as, uh, you know, your desktop. There's nothing out of the ordinary here. And, uh, as far as these other two menus, I don't typically do it. Um, I usually come right into here and hit icons, scroll down to the bottom and remove the home file system and trash because I don't like desktop icons. Um, however, some people do just know that's what I've done. Uh, the main thing people like the most is the removable drives. But as you see, I have a lot of removable drives in my system, so I don't like that on my desktop either. But that is desktop environment. Um, so let's go ahead and move on to appearance. So for appearance, we can go into our all settings and go directly into appearance. Um, here, I've installed and downloaded quite a few styles so you can kind of see the different styles available to me. Now, you can download more styles and I probably should. Uh, I haven't found any in here that I really just love. Um, go to xfcelook.org, check the description below for the exact link. Um, and you can download whatever you want. There's different icon sets to have, um, you know, a better appearance. So you can kind of change and see how the appearance and these, all the icons in the system will change. And then your traditional fonts. I'm not going to go into that. And that is it for the appearance of the system. And this comes built into XFCE. Now you'll notice I do have some other like theming, applications. I've installed these, kind of tinkered around with them. I don't particularly enjoy them. However, uh, you can install and, and do them at your own thing. I probably should just go ahead and remove them out of here. I'm not a big fan. So now that you know how to 
change the appearance, change your window appearance, all these things and make XFC functional. There's one more thing I wanted to touch on from the all settings that I highly recommend anybody set up on a new install. Um, one, the keyboard. Go into here and you can actually add application shortcuts. It's really cool. So I went ahead and added Super T for my terminal and changed the look of it. Um, I also uh, added like uh, Super C to launch my web browser, which is Chrome. So I got that over here. And then also uh, Super F, pull in my file manager. These are the three absolute must have keyboard setups that I do in every single setup, which is nice. I have to have these in pretty much any uh, Linux distribution I have just because it saves just a ton of time. Um, one other theming thing is on the terminal. Obviously, most people have their own terminal thing. I just use the default here. You can right click and change appearances in your terminal just as kind of a bonus here at the end. Um, but that's it for today's video. I'm not gonna go too far into depth here. I just wanted to give a basic breakdown of XFC customization. It is great. I'm still learning a lot of it, but I wanted to share just these basic tips and tricks uh, to help you out kind of break into the XFC because there's a lot it has to offer. Uh, just also be careful about installing too many packages. Really the two main ones that you have to get is Whisker and a la carte. A la carte just for expanding the menus, uh, right click edit menus, and then also a whisker for the better start start menu. Um, those are the two big ones. And then you can kind of do a bunch of other ones and try out some of the theming applications and theming plugins. I didn't particularly enjoy them. I'd rather just do it through appearance. Um, but again, each is own. This is a very opinionated, just kind of over the thing. Once you understand the basics, you can branch off and do whatever you want, and make your arch look however uh, you like or XFC, however you like. Um, but that's it for today's video and I'll see you guys in the next one.